Hi there, we're going to take a quick look at some programming concepts. Um, specifically, I want to focus on how we can figure out what it is we want to manipulate or what it is we want to put into code. Uh, and there's two ways we can get this. One is from the inspector and the other is from our friendly neighborhood Google. So we're going to take a look at how we can use Google and also how we can use the inspector so that we can get our we can streamline our C sharp code writing process as opposed to just constantly having this I have absolutely no idea what I should be doing at this point in time uh, so I've got I've just loaded up a basic uh, scene here I'm gonna go ahead and do this all in 2d for the moment just because it'll be a little bit easier to you know kind of get rid of one of the uh, the axes here so let's see I'll change my camera over here to a orthographic and I'm assuming that you've used Unity before, so I'm not really going to go through and explain every single thing that I'm doing here. Okay, well, that's not bad. Um, I don't really want my that's that default skybox in there either, so let's go ahead and chuck it. We'll just do a none. Okay, there we go. Okay. There we go. And let's go ahead and change this to a standalone. There we go. Okay. And final thing, just because I want to, I like having my direction like and my camera like right on top of each other when I'm doing 2D stuff like this. So, yeah. And I don't need the light angled. And where'd my camera go? Aha. Let's put it at a zero. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and throw something out here so I've got something to kind of play around with. I'll just do a game object, 3D object, and I'm just going to put a cube out here somewhere. So let's say, as I move this cube around here, notice over here in the transform, I have the position properties are changing, right? So let's say that I want to change the position of this, uh, this cube. I want to be able to do that in script. Now, the way that we can do this let me go ahead and create a quick script here. C sharp. I'm going to call this an example script. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and assign this to my cube up here. So that way it is on my cube. There you go. Uh, is it on there? Cube. There it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and load up our example script here. Get Visual Studio loaded up. And we will then be ready to play around with some scripting in here. Uh, good enough. Okay, so let's say I want to be able to move, I want to be able to reposition my script, or reposition my object in script. So I, I see as I move this around here that, that what I want to change is going to be these properties right here in this position, okay? Now I see that they are an X, Y, and a Z, and my basic data types, if I were to load, oh, let's do notepad we'll do a notepad so we have some key data types that well basically we just have to know and it, it's I guess it can be viewed as a memorization kind of thing whatever so an int is an integer whole number a float is a decimal number a bool is a true a false value a string is a series of letters and or numbers these are the default primitive data types that we need to know as far as when we're using variables and we should go ahead and add one that's not a primitive and that is a vector 3 and a vector 3 is a um, set of three float values and by float I mean decimal numbers and you will usually see this as an X a Y and a Z and the X Y and Z are floats so if I'm wanting to change X Y and Z and if these are the data types that I'm currently familiar with I can look at this say well which one of these am I going to need as far as a variable so I'm going to need a vector 3 in order to move things around. So let's go ahead and go over here into 
my script and I can create when I'm creating a variable I have a visibility visibility data type and variable name and a semicolon so that's how I create a, 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 um, a variable so my visibility is either public or private so I'm going to go with a public my data type I'm going to say is a vector 3 and my variable name I'm going to call it new position like so now what this public means if I save this and go back into unity public means that I will be able to see this over here in the inspector so I can change the values here in the inspector it also means that I can access it from other scripts because it's right here in the inspector okay so I want to reposition this so I'm going to go down to my update and I want to position this so the question is how do I how do I know how to position this thing well let's bring this over here and let's figure this out so I'm going to work it backwards so I want to be able to change the position value of the transform transform component uh, let's see I'll go ahead and put component here of the transform component of this object this object okay so does that makes sense how I got that I'm reading right here I want to change the position property of the transform component of this thing all right so how can I do that well let's try bringing up our c-sharp and let me put my c-sharp over here and let me go ahead and get rid of my solution explorer so it's a little bit easier there we go and I'm gonna put this over right about here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type this backwards so I'm gonna say this dot transform dot position equals new position this raises another question how did I know to use an equal here as opposed to maybe parentheses I knew that this is a variable or a property because it's lowercase so these naming conventions that that uh, we talk about in class they actually matter it's not just a oh people just kind of like this this convention will help you understand what it is you're looking at just by looking at it and as I was typing this stuff out uh, we could also say well how do I know that I needed to use a lowercase transform because if I just type transform notice there's a capital transform and a lowercase transform so how did I know I needed the lowercase transform well if I type this dot there's only a lowercase transform so yeah kind of knew that interesting thing about this I don't need that I can remove that and it will work just fine the the this keyword is assumed so I don't actually have to have it there but if I do put it there as I'm learning programming it helps me to be able to find exactly what I'm after because I didn't have the capital transform versus the lowercase transform I only had the one to choose from also it helped me to just go right through right here but as I just said I could have done it without the this in fact I'll show that here in just a second so I know that position needs a vector 3 how do I know that well let's get over here dot pos and right here it says vector 3 transform dot position so I know it's a vector 3 I know it uses an equal because it is a lowercase new position there we go all right so I'm gonna save that and let's see what happens so let's play this there it goes play 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 oops I didn't want that maximized I think let's not maximize that there we go so now let's play it and you can see my position here is equal to my position here so let's change my Y to a 2 you can see it moved let's move it over here to a 3 and it moved you can see it changing up here okay so I'm going to change this back to 0 Oh, what just happened how come I can't change it because every update frame this variable is being applied to this not the other way around look at the code new position this thing is going to be we're going to use that value and we're going to put it in this thing 
uh, you know, in math, you're taught that, oh, you can do this either way. In programming, whatever's on the right of the equal sign gets assigned into what's on the left. So what's on the left gets changed. What's on the right does not. So as I change this value here in my inspector, I'm updating this value here, not vice versa. All right, so let me go ahead and stop that and show you that if I get rid of this dot right here, it still works because this was assumed. All right, so blank there it went, zero, zero, zero. Let's move it to a four. There you go. And you can see that that's working. So this is assumed. Uh, it's, it's just something that as I'm working through here, it helps me to find what I'm looking for. Okay, fine. Let's say, let, let's, let's get rid of that. So let's try something else. I want to, um, ba -da -ba -da. I want to turn this collider on and off. Why? I have no idea. Um, no, actually there's a lot of ideas. Uh, my object, my player has a special shield, and so collisions are ignored. Uh, there's actually better ways I could do that than that, but I, I want to turn it on and off for whatever the reason. All right, so let's go here into our script again. No, actually, before we get to our script, let's bring up my notepad. So I want to turn this collider on and off. So I want to do a, I've got a box collider of this object. Hmm. All right. Now, once I get down to these things that have these check boxes, there's a special method that I need to use inside of C sharp, which is this guy right here. Get component less than sign template greater than sign open close parentheses. So what I'm saying here is whenever you're wanting to get a component and you can tell if it's a component because it has a checkbox that's kind of one of the easy ways to tell. If I want to get a component I do a get component and then inside the uh, angle brackets what type of component I'm after followed by open close parentheses and then I can do whatever I want. Okay so let's say let's break this down a little bit easier here. So I want to I'm going to go home. What is it I'm wanting to do? Well, I want to enable the box collider component of this object. Now, you might say, well, how do you know it's enabled? Um, okay, I don't. I want to turn off the box collider component of this object. That's what I want to do. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Let's go back into our script. So right here, I'm going to do this because I'm just going to follow right to left. This dot get component, that thing I just said we're going to need. Well, there it is, get component. Uh, template, that means what am I after? What kind of component am I wanting to get? I'm wanting to get the component that's right before this word. How can I tell? How do I know it's a box collider? Because it told me it's a box collider. It's right there. It tells me exactly what it is. So I want to get a box collider component. Open close parenthesis. How do I know I need an open close parenthesis? Because get component is a method. All methods are going to have open close parentheses. How do I know get component's a method? Because it starts with a capital letter, whereas a property or a variable starts with a lowercase letter. So right there, once again, these conventions are helping us. So I want to turn this off. Um, okay, there's nothing there. All right. You know what? I don't know what I'm looking for. I want to turn it off, but I don't know. Let's see. Animation, attached rigid body, audio bounds, broadcast, camera center, closest point, closest point on bounds, collider, collider, compare tag, constant, force, constant. Ah, oh, what's this enabled thing do? What's this thing do? Uh, enabled colliders will collide with other colliders. Disabled colliders won't. So enabled kind of like turns it on and off. That's what it sounds like. And I see right here that it is a bool. I know it's going to be a variable because it's a lowercase. So let's do a dot enabled right there. I need to set it equal to something. Okay, let's create a variable up here we can play around with. Public bool. Um, I'll call it is on. There we go. And so down here I'll set it equal to is on. 
And the whole reason I'm really using this variable is so I can change it over here in my inspector very easily. All right, so let's take a look at this. Shoop. Shoop, there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Look at the checkbox. This box collider is turned off. Okay, let's see. Can I turn it on? Now it's turned on. Off, on, off, on. I'm doing this within script. Cool. All right. I want to change the color. I want to be able to change the color of this thing. Well, let's start off by giving ourselves a variable up here. So I'm going to go with a public color my color. Uh, color is a data type, so I can set it equal to that. How did I know that was a da data type? Well, partly because I've been programming in Unity for a while, so I've learned it. Another way I could know is I could just go into Google and I could say Unity C Sharp uh, change color. And I will see, let's see, I see a whole bunch of things. I've got this set color thing right here. Okay, well, that looks kind of interesting. Um, I can set it to, what can I set it to? Uh, hmm, well, that's not really helping me. Value, okay, value. Color value to set. Okay, so right up here as I look at this where it says public void set color string. String, string, I've heard that before, string. Okay, here it is, string, it's a data type. Okay, string is a data type. So string, name, color, value, I'm not sure about that. Public void set color, int, int. Hey, I've seen an int, that's a data type. Int, name ID, okay, that must be the name of that variable, color. Okay, I am going to bet that color is a data type for a color. That's what I'm going to bet. So I'm just going to add that to my document of what I am learning as I'm writing code. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to change the color of this thing. So let's take a look. Where is my color set? Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. Hmm, what's this? It kind of looks like a color box. I can't do anything with it. Huh. Okay. Um, let me go back into Google here real quick and notice set color is a part of a material. Hmm. Huh. Look at this right here. See right here where it says materials inside my mesh render. What's that? So if I open up materials. I see right here, I have a default material. Okay, well, that's this thing here. I wonder, I don't know, let's just, let's just see. Let's, let's just try some stuff here. This is one of the important things about programming. A lot of times, you don't know exactly what you want to do, you're, but you can get kind of close enough. So I'm going to say I want to, I want to change the color of the um, material of the material this material of that material on the mesh renderer renderer component on this object hmm. okay this makes maybe I mean I can get a material here probably on the mesh render component on this object and maybe it'll get me to a color let's let's take a look at what we've got so I'll go over here to C sharp and let's see what happens so I'm going to say this dot get component if I can spell correctly Oh, mesh renderer? Is that a component? Why, yes, it is. Right here it is. Mesh renderer. Open close parenthesis dot material. Material returns the first material assigned to the renderer. Okay. Material dot. Hey, the very first one right there is color color it's lowercase so that must mean I can just assign it a value so my color 
All right. I don't have any red squiggles, so syntactically this is good. Does it work? Well, let's try this. Let's come back here. I'm going to let my script update. So there you go. You see it's got a color wheel out here, or a color bar, not a wheel. Let's see what happens. Okay. My box is gray. <laughs> my material is black, but my box looks kind of gray. Let's see here. Okay, that's still working. That's cool. Let's try changing this. Let's go. Hey, it's red. Huh. That's neat. Uh, let's try green. Huh. Well, I'm changing my color. Pretty cool. Now you might be looking at this thing. Well, that's not really a nice red. Well, I'm not really going to go into material creation at the moment. But what's going on is dealing with our smoothness right here. If I just change my smoothness and change my metallic, maybe put my metallic up about there. Uh, because this is a PBR shader, if I were to change this to, oh, say, a legacy shader, it would be more traditional to what you're used to. So you know, I can just adjust that. But, you know, whatever. Okay, so I'm changing my color. That's pretty nice. Uh, let's see, what else? What else can we do? Um, let's put another object out here. Game object. I'm going to put a 3D object, a sphere. I'm just going to move it over to here. So let's say I want to be able to enable or disable an object. Right? Now we've kind of done something similar to that with our enabling, disabling our collider. So if I want to enable or disable an object, if I take a look at my sphere, and once again, this is assuming that you're a little bit familiar with Unity. If I click this checkbox right up here, I can enable or disable it. Well, that's not really a component. That's the object itself. Um, hmm. Let's see. Not really sure. So I'm going to try enable object. This object. So I want to enable or disable the object that's attached to this object. Uh, you know, let's, let's take a look. Let's see what we can do with this. Um, so I'm going to say this dot. Is there an object? There is not an object. But as soon as I started typing object, Visual Studio came up and said, you probably mean a game object. All right, well, let's try that game object. Dot. Okay, there's no enabled. <sighs> Let's see. So we go back to scrolling through here. And we go back to reading these. And take your time. Read these. I'm going to go ahead and save time and tell you it is set active. Read through them, and you will find that obviously this is one we're looking for. And as it comes over here, I get a signature of it, I can see that it is a method. How do I know it's a method? Well, number one, it's of type void. Number two, it's capital lettered. And I see that it, it takes a parameter of a value for either true or false. So let's go with set active false. All right, let's see what this does. So let's go play or not. There it goes. My cube notice it's gone it's not active my sphere I can't see my sphere because it is actually located incorrectly I want it at zero 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 there we go okay so let's give ourselves a variable on our script here so I'm going to make a public game object my obj why not so down here instead of this dot game object I want to try doing this to let's go right here let's actually comment this one out now that I see that worked I would like to be able to turn off some other objects so my obj dot oh that's still there game object dot set active and I'm going to use the is on bool that I've already got set up there and save that all right so let's go back here into 
Unity, and let's see what happens this time. So I'm going to go to my, so I get this, unassigned. The variable myobj of example script has not been assigned. What does that mean? Well, let's, let's see, what could that mean? My obj equals none. It means I've not given it a value. All right, cool, not a problem. So let's just grab our sphere and drop it down in there. Let's try this again. Ah, the sphere went away. Um, can I make it come back? Is on, I'm going to hit that. Sphere's back. Gone, back, gone, back, gone, back. Okay, now, I'm not going to keep going and going and going. I, I think that you start to get the point here that what I want to do before you go to Google and you just start Googling and you get lost in the rabbit hole of Unity forums that are doing things that, well, might almost be what you want, take a look at the inspector properties that you have over here and see if any of those are what you're after. But there's going to be times that they're not. So, for instance, I want, do, 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 I want to be able to move something. So I'm going to go to Google. And whenever I'm using Google with Unity, I always start off with Unity C Sharp. That way, I'm whatever results I'm getting are going to be relevant to Unity and C Sharp language. Unity C Sharp move object. And very first one takes me to scripting API. As a general rule, when you do your Googling, if you see a scripting API, that's what you want to go read. Before you get lost on reading other people's code that isn't working or, you know, you know, like Unity Answers down here. Nothing wrong with this Unity Answers, but, you know, let's take a look at this. Um, so I tried this. It didn't work. What do I need to do? And so you go through a discussion in this case, and right there's the answer. But you might be looking at this and thinking, well, you know, I don't really know what some of these things are. You know, this vector 3 dot write, where did this come from? So instead, if I just go into the Unity API, well, here's some stuff. And notice right here, vector 3 forward, vector 3 up. So what we've got here is we look at a public void trans translation. Translate. We have a vector 3. Yeah, it's translation, but I prefer to refer to this as movement direction. This is the vector you want to move in. And then whether or not we're moving in self or world space. So I need to tell it what direction I want to move. And you'll notice that most of the time, this is modified by time.delta time. Time.delta time is simply the amount of time that has passed since the last time we were in this update method. The whole point of that is that it'll, it forces this vector movement to be, uh, to be stripped down to our refresh cycle. So that way our movement is a lot smoother. Uh, we can also use a speed to control that as well. So let's take a look at that. Let's go back here. I've already got a a position, right? My new position right there. I'm just going to keep using new position because it's a vector, so I can. And then I'm going to add a public float speed. There we go. All right, so let's come on down here and let's do a transform dot translate. Notice. Boink. Translate. There it is. It's a capital T. It's a method. It wants a vector 3. And so for this vector 3, what I'm going to do is exactly what I just saw. I'm going to give it a vector 3, in this case, new position. I'm going to multiply that by time dot delta time. But I want to have a little bit better control over this. So I'm also going to give it a speed so that I can modify how quickly it moves. Generally speaking, you're, well, not generally, almost, yeah, generally speaking, you want this uh, movement vector to be normalized, meaning that the values are, the magnitude of it is going to be 1. Uh, it's a general rule. And that's kind of a little bit beyond what I'm really going to look at in this video. So let's save that. Go here. And there we go. Let's play this. So I want this cube to start moving. So I'm going to give this a, I'm going to change my movement, my new position to be a 1 on the x, which means it will move to the right. How do I know it will move to the right? Well, let's take a look at this. Here's my cube. If I want to move to the right, uh, I can't because my new position is overriding it. Um, you know what? I'm going to have to comment that out right here. 
this new position will stop it from translating because I'm hard coding it. So if I want to move to the right, if I grab this X, notice I'm moving to the right and I'm increasing. So if I use a positive X value, I'll go to the right. Negative X value will go to the left. Positive Y will go up. Negative Y will go down. All right, there we go. So I want to try... Where'd you go, cube? Why are you there? Go there. So I want to try moving this thing. So I'm going to try moving it to the left. So let's make this a minus 1. Huh, it's not moving. It shouldn't be moving. Take a look down here. Translation. So my position times my time dot delta time times my speed. My speed is 0. So all of this is 0. So it's not moving. So let's give ourselves a speed. Let's say 1. Here we go. Let's say 2. Oh, we're going faster. 3. Here we go. And we pass right on by. I want to come back the other way. So let's make this a positive 1. And he'll come trucking back. There he is. I'm going to slow him down to 0.5. Let's go diagonal down left or diagonal down right. There we go. There's diagonal down left. Now let's go diagonal up left. And we're just kind of trucking along right there. Let's increase our speed. Uh, let's go back to the right. I don't know where we are. <laughs> I've lost us. I don't know where we are. Anyway, so so we can use the Google to get us to something that we might want. A lot of times we can also find what it is we're wanting just by looking over this. Uh, one thing about programming, if you're new to programming, do not, do not go into uh, Unity scripting API and be of the decision that, you know what, I'm just going to, if I can figure out reference, here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the Unity Scripting API, and I'm just going to – I'll start right here at Unity Engine. Uh, let's go to uh, – let's go back up here. I'm just going to like go right here, and I'm just going to memorize this thing. Uh, no, you're not. Don't do that. Uh, well, I'll use my search up here. Well, you can, but if you're new to – programming that's going to be kind of difficult to deal with uh, right out here Google unity C sharp what you want to do many many times when the top three answers are going to take you right into the scripting API I want to turn to face an object unity scripting API Vector 3 rotate towards or transform look at. There's two options. Take a look at what those are before you start diving down into these other ones. I want to Unity C sharp detect a collision. Okay, notice I'm not getting any scripting API stuff here. Uh, instead, it's taking me to a learning site detecting collisions with on collision enter. What does on collision? Okay, so. I could go there, or I could at this point just say, okay, so what? On collision enter does something? C sharp collision? What's that do? Ah, look at this. Scripting API, collider on collision enter. I could go right there. And here is my straight documentation on how to deal with a collision. Or I could go back to the learning one. Uh, so, you know, you really need to, as you're learning programming, particularly in Unity, you need to be willing to use your resources that are available. There's a lot of stuff already there for you. You also need to really make sure that you understand variables, how to use them, that you understand what a data type is, and that you know how to use if-else logic. Uh, you have to be really rock solid on these as you're moving forward. Um, I mean, you don't have to be rock solid on this as, as you're learning, but you have to keep in mind that these things, you need to understand this before you try to do more complex things. Uh, so, for instance, there's a lot of topics as you look into programming. There's arrays, lists, dictionaries. Um, also, if you look into Unity, you're going to find something called uh, coroutines, which are just incredibly cool. 
Uh, the thing with the coroutine is if you don't understand this stuff up here, you don't really belong down here. And it's not an insult. It's simply like if you just learned how to drive, you don't belong driving an 18-wheeler. You learn how to drive that before you start driving that. If if you've just um, you know whatever you've just learned, you know, stay stay with what you learn and build upon that. Uh, don't try to skip things. Learn the basics and then go on from there. And be very aware that there's a lot of stuff right here visible to us that is helping us figure out what we need. Uh, so kind of little way that you know some advice on how you could approach programming if you have any questions or any advice on things that perhaps I should have worded differently or maybe I left out or whatever just feel free to let me know other than that have a good day